Hello and welcome back to my channel. Bonsoir et bienvenue sur ma chaîne. My name is Mural and this video will be part two of my two-part mini-series of videos about Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov and My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell because these two have been compared a lot, somewhat justifiably, but also I think they are fairly different novels. In part one I went over new thoughts I now have about these two novels because I very recently reread them so they're basically like a compliment slash an update to my original reviews for both of these so if you want to check that out but I wanted to separate it out so that if you were just interested in the comparison well you could skip straight to it. I'm of course assuming that if you're watching this video you kind of know what these books are about if you don't I would kindly first of all recommend you read them, <laughs> and or second that you go check out my original reviews where I go over the plots of each of these novels. So first we're going to take a look at the writing. In my opinion, as I stated several times, Nabokov was a true master <laughs> of, well, writing in the English language, a true wordsmith as I like to say, Lolita Ryan's to this day one of the most beautifully written novels I've ever read in the English language. Just the level of writing, there's not a word out of place, there's not a sentence out of place, there's so many beautiful turns of phrases. He manages to make something beautiful and poetic out of a very dark subject matter, so kudos to that. And he gets so playful with the language as well. He's a wordsmith but he has fun doing so. The only other author I get a remotely similar vibe from is actually China Mievel. I find that he does that too. He really understands how to use the English language, but he plays with it as well. Nabokov uses a lot of puns. He makes a lot of references to literature and culture. In fact, there are probably lots of references. I missed and I keep missing. My need to invest in the annotated Lolita one of these days. At times being cheeky and funny, at times just being very lyrical or sad or even pedantic at times, a wee bit. But I love that. I love that. I keep loving it. That's always something that delights me when I go into a Nabokov novel because I know the level of English is just going to be amazing. Whereas with my dog Vanessa, we're coming back down to earth. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Lolita's there. My dog Vanessa's there. And it's fine. It's not garbage writing either. I'm not saying that. It's a fairly like contemporary style of writing to reflect the way my characters speak, I guess. It's nothing particularly lyrical or descriptive. I guess there are a couple of passages that are a bit more evocative and pretty, but they're few and far between. And so yeah, lots of words repeated. She has certain formulas she sticks to to describe certain scenes, especially the sex scenes that involve traumatic dissociation and that got annoying very quickly. And also I mentioned this in part one but I just cannot get over the exed out thing. That is just so ridiculous and lazy to me. Just use the word exiting or closing a window on your computer because just simply putting an X slash ED out, come on! I expect better from literary fiction. That makes me elitist. So be it. So yeah, definitely just not the same level of writing, like not even remotely. This novel is not interesting because of its writing. Now, points of overlap. Each of these novels does have the characteristic of being told in a single point of view, and that point of view is that of an unreliable narrator, because this person is basically telling you his or her story through their exclusive eyes, and well, either twisting facts or struggling with recalling things accurately and things like that. In the case of Lolita, of course, it is the point of view of the older man, the predator, the groomer, the child abuser. In the case of My Dark Vanessa, it is the point of view of the younger female character, so the victim of grooming of abuse. Two points of difference as well. In Lolita, it is a fairly linear story. Humbert Hubbard basically recounts his life from his childhood, which goes fairly quickly up until the moment he meets Lolita and then, well, he tells that story and some of what happens afterwards. And of course he thinks about his past and tries to explain things, but it's fairly straightforward. In the case of My Dark Vanessa, however, it's a dual timeline. So you have the story told from the point of view of teenage Vanessa when she's 15 years old and she meets her teacher Jacob Strain and engages in a relationship with him, or he engages in a relationship with her. 
And then you also have her point of view as an adult woman of about 32 years old, trying to remember what happened and dealing with the fact that other women, ex-students of her teacher, have come forward with allegations of sexual abuse, sexual assault, and what she has to deal with all of that. That makes it very interesting as well. I'm going to come back to this when I talk about the characters, but I think actually it was necessary because Vanessa's a character I felt was actually fairly empty, so giving two different age perspectives does help to flesh the narrative out a bit. It also helps to, well, explore the kinds of things you would think or say in Vanessa's position, which is what interested me as someone who went through something very similar to her. Character-wise, well, again, most of the praise here I'm going to give to Lolita because the character work in Lolita is superb. Chef's kiss, as they say. It is a deeply psychological novel. You're literally in the head of the main character and he does his damnedest to tell his story, explain his inner feelings, his inner demons, his inner thoughts, and try to convince you that he's not a complete monster or that he's not completely irredeemable. The background information given about him as a character is fairly comprehensive. I mean, like I said, he starts telling his story back when he was like a child and then a young adult, his years in Paris before he moved to the States and met Lolita. So you have a lot of context for who he is as a man, also as a, a paraphiliac. So the line that kind of straddles pedophilia and hemophilia in psychiatric terms. I will say though, despite the fact that he's an unreliable narrator and you only get a description of Lolita from his perspective, I also think the character work for Lolita is actually pretty good. And you do get a sense of who she is. It seems to be a fairly negative portrayal at times, but you can still see what the wounded, abused child behind that, and even if she was a bit bratty and had behavioural issues, doesn't change the fact she was a victim and, and innocent in that regard in any case. I mean, that's not the point. But you do get a sense of what kind of young person she was, and thus the kind of adult she would grow into. You do get a picture of who Lolita is. So, yeah. I have no complaints about the character work. Whereas <laughs> with My Dark Vanessa, as I stated in my updated thoughts upon rereading the novel in part one, I do think there was something missing. Ultimately, even though you are in Vanessa's head and you see the story from her exclusive point of view, she felt very empty at times, like a shell of a character, which I mean, I could then sort of fill in with myself, I guess. But uh, I'm sorry, this is not quite good enough, in my opinion, for a work of literature. You should be able to say who the, this character is. Contrary to, like, Lolita, there is next to no personal historical context for her. So by that I mean, like, her personal life history before she was 15 and before she met her teacher is basically absent, non-existent. So there's no context to inform any of her reactions, any of her personality quotes, why she is in this situation she is in the first place. So why did she get so obsessed and attached to her female best friend? And so now she has no friends. Does she have social anxiety? Does she have depression in a way? Like, is she intellectually gifted? Is she not? She is in advanced placement classes. And there's like this line that says she once came home from school with a report card saying, oh, Vanessa's eight going on 30. But then... The author does nothing with that. Sometimes it's said she loves the family dog, but it's all about her relationship with the teacher. Nothing else exists. And like I said, I don't think being groomed or abused is a good enough explanation because that never happened to me. And I don't think what Vanessa went through was more traumatic or violent than what I went through. So, okay, whatever. So yeah, felt a bit empty. Strain as a character. So Jacob Strain, her teacher, I guess it was fine a bit on the same level, ultimately. Ironically, I guess I'm less bothered about that. But my point is, Lolita, as a secondary character almost, because, I mean, she's described through the lens of Humbert Hubbard, to me, felt more fleshed out, despite the fact that Humbert Hubbard is an unreliable narrator. She felt more fleshed out than Vanessa White, the main character of My Dark Vanessa, who is the person whose point of view you get throughout the entire novel. That, to me, is a problem. <laughs> now, one thing I will say, though, one thing you could potentially criticize about Lolita is that you are in Humbert Humbert's head a lot. And there might be an unbalanced ratio between being in his inner thoughts and having things like dialogue with other characters, notably Lolita. But I think it's a very minimal, like, 
Whereas in my dark Manasa, one thing I did enjoy about it, again, enjoy might not be the most accurate term here, but I'm going with that, is that, well, the author did a very good job of like having a template for the kinds of thoughts and the kinds of things you would say as a person in Vanessa's position, defending her teacher, convincing herself that it was an extraordinary love story and things like that. So the dynamics between her and Jacob were well done because of the dialogue the author chose to give to them, the kinds of conversations they have, the words they exchange, and then the types of conversations Vanessa has with like Taylor Birch, this other girl who was supposedly assaulted by Strain much later, or the conversations Vanessa has with her psychologist or with her college professor. Those things to me were well realized. So not so much her internal development as an individual character, but the dynamics between the characters that allowed for the development of the themes of the novel and the conversations I think the novel wants to foster in wider society. So that I will give to my dark Vanessa. Now, so far I've pointed to, I guess, differences in quality between these two novels with regards to the writing and the character work. And I've pointed to like areas of overlap in how the story is told. But where I think you can really point to these novels have similar elements, but these novels are also fairly different and are trying to do different things, it's with the themes. And even actually the plot to a certain extent. I would like to stress to this, Lolita in my mind isn't really a story of grooming, which I know might sound weird, it's definitely a story of, uh, among other things, a predator abusing a, uh, a minor, like a very young teenager. I don't think Lolita's groomed though, she's never groomed, she's basically kidnapped. Like her mother dies and she's, well, taken on a road trip with Humbert Humbert. Like yeah, she's a bit flirty with him, like in a childish way and she kisses him and whatever, <laughs> because she's a flirty tween, right? There's the whole development mental thing that's perfectly natural and normal but adults aren't supposed to encourage that with themselves obviously but she doesn't fall in love with Humbert she never loves him and she hates him and wants to escape from him so it's not a story of grooming as such it's a story of abuse but not grooming my dog Vanessa is a story of grooming even though I'm not even sure Vanessa ever says that she loves Strain we're gonna assume she was in love with the teacher at the very least she was obsessed with him and constructed her entire identity around him and was in carpool with him for seven years like I was with my own teacher though I started at 13 and cheated at 15 so it's fairly different like that that's the story of grooming an actual relationship she was in love we're gonna, we're gonna say that we're gonna say that she was in love even though I'm not entirely sure whereas in Lolita that's not the case at all like Lolita's never in love with Humbert Humbert she she hates the guy she wants to escape from him she is disgusted by him. Like that to me is a pretty important difference to begin with between these two novels plot wise. But the themes. So I'll go over the themes that just don't overlap at all in my opinion. Nabokov's Lolita explores such things as sublimating, perversion, evil, harm, destruction in a way through art, through beauty, through literature. It tries to elevate something deeply dark and twisted and tainted to something more luminous and lofty and ultimately redeemable. I also think, at least from reading analyses of Lolita, that there's a conversation going on about the conflict between the cultures of new consumerist America, at least the America of the 1950s, of the American dream, and old Europe. The old Europe of refinement and culture and the arts and literature, all the things that Humbert Humbert loves that Lolita doesn't give a single crap about. In My Dark Vanessa, you have the theme, well, of trauma and abuse and how a person evolves alongside it and how someone comes to terms with it and tries to deal with it and make peace ultimately with it, or not, because obviously it's very complex and complicated. The conversation going on about consent, or as I said in my original review, what I think should be more appropriately called informed consent, and also a sub-conversation about the age of consent, how all these things square with the phenomenon of grooming, of being coaxed into a relationship that, well, involves also feelings, perhaps love, or at least infatuation, 
and things like that. There's also commentary on the Me Too movement and how, well, I mean, I think it applies to all victims of abuse, but let's stick more specifically to women, how we're kind of led by popular culture and by ourselves to minimize the abuse we went through and the trauma of being sexualized very young and things like that. And those things are not at all present in Lolita. I also think there's a discussion about how potentially harmful some of these big collective wounds can be to individual survivors or victims of abuse, especially when said victims are not ready to confront that trauma. Is it reasonable to demand of victims to come forward and join the big movement and denounce their abusers when they're just not there emotionally or cognitively? Like, how's that fair? Is it really justified to apply, like I said in my original review, a cookie cutter narrative, a very stereotypical narrative onto something that might be just a bit more nuanced and complex, which affects a human being in very intimate ways? Yes, Vanessa is technically a victim of grooming and, well, sexual abuse, emotional abuse. Like, people are really obsessed with the sex part, but, like, the emotional part is just as harmful, in my opinion. So there's that whole conversation going on, like, letting victims speak for themselves, even if what they say might not follow the big movement seamlessly, the way everyone wants it to. That's very specific to My Dark Vanessa, and I think those elements are what make My Dark Vanessa valuable and interesting. Where My Dark Vanessa and Lolita overlap one another, I do think they both share a certain motif of, well, I'm going to use the word trauma for Lolita as well. Trauma and memory, basically the importance of memory to the construction of yourself and your identity, because Humbert is remembering everything that happened up until the moment he's writing from his jail cell. He has a very good memory, he says, but sometimes you kind of wonder, are you re recollecting this accurately? And sometimes even he says, like, I might be mixing things up. And so basically constructing a story, maybe a fancy out of memory, because, well, that's also a thing, like, what you remember, is that actually what happened in your life? All memories, in a way, are constructions made by our brains. I mean, the perception of reality is a construction made by our brains, but again, another conversation for another time. So all of that is kind of still a bit wobbly around the edges. In my dog, Vanessa, this is very relevant because Vanessa, as a 32-year-old, has a hard time remembering what happened when she was 15 and exactly what she felt, exactly how she conceptualized her relationship with Strain. She liked the sex, but at the same time she wasn't comfortable and she cared more about the cuddling and the affection and things like that. And I can attest that memory is very fickle. I myself have trouble remembering certain things. So they definitely share that general pattern of storytelling, of plot development, of character development as well. I will also add that, in my opinion, though they're doing it from like different vantage points, they are addressing the idea of who gets to tell a shared story, who has the power of voice, as I call it. In Lolita, well, it's the standard voice we've been used to uh, hearing in uh, our different societies, that of the straight male. It could have white male, depending on cultural context, but I would generalize it to straight male. The man who writes the novel and explains his relationship with the female partner. In this case, it's a lot worse than that. It's the bloody minor, the child slash a very young teenager. He gets to tell the story of his relationship with Lolita and entraps her in a way in that novel, he immortalizes her, but on his own terms, which he never gets a say in any of it. I might add, by the way, that that's something touched upon in this memoir I read also this year that's called Le Consentement by Vanessa Springora, which was, which is, sorry, a woman who also was in a relationship with a French author in like the 80s when she was 14 years old. And the author is now like 80 and he's actually on trial. For pedophilia because the guy also like saw underage male prostitutes in the Philippines and he had lots of relationships with um, minor girls as well and the guy waxed poetical about his pedophilic leanings in his writing so that's the whole thing but she talks about that in her memoir like who gets to tell the story and in my dark Vanessa there's that same conversation who gets to tell the story of what happened now like I said, there's the caveat that it goes further in the sense that who gets to tell the story, even if it's for the greater good, but you don't want to because it just touches on something very personal. So there's an added layer to that, in my opinion, but it's, it's the same idea. In this case, Vanessa finally gets 
to tell her side of the story. You finally get the female voice in the relationship, in the abusive relationship. So those are the points where Lolita and My Dark Vanessa definitely come into contact. And though they are important points, that's it in a way. There are important points. Like these two works are not completely divorced from one another, right? That's not the point I'm trying to make. But I'm, I'm a bit wary of people still continuing to say like, oh, this is the answer to Lolita. It's like the comeback from Lolita to Humbert Humbert. No, it's not. Not really. They're different works of literature. They're just on different for one levels with regards to just sheer mastery of the English language and even character work and character psychology. But they're also just doing different things. They're doing different things, exploring different ideas. The plots are different. Yes, it's the abuse of female minors by a predator. I will say that definitely points of similarity in the psychology of Jacob Strain and Humbert Humbert. I will say this, I agree that my dog Vanessa is, well, among other things, the author's answer to the misinterpretation of Lolita in popular culture and by probably a lot of readers. Because unfortunately Lolita has become like an archetype of the sexually promiscuous and provocative, very young teenager, like basically a person of pubertal age or just past it in the case of someone like Vanessa. That I'll agree with. It's an answer to that. But like in the novel Lolita itself, the author never makes the apology of pedophilia of child abuse. So I want to make that very, very clear. And it's just, it's doing its own thing. It's also, people have dubbed it Nabokov's love letter to the English language because of the way he plays around with the words. But I mean, he does that in other English language novels. I want to rectify. I said that in my original review for Lolita. He wrote more than two novels in the English language. That was a big mistake on my part. And I'll amend that in the description. So yeah, it's just doing different things. And my dog, Vanessa, really is specifically addressing that trope of like the older man seducing a teenager and like oh it's romantic or it's like subversive and provocative and edgy etc but no it's actually harmful in all cases i mean i ultimately don't know but probably in most cases and of course you could apply this to an older woman with a teenage boy or even the same sex relationships in a way i, I want to say that lolita kind of transcends the original plot device that feels very flippant to say it's not it's not a quite a plot device but it goes beyond like that central premise of the perverted relationship between the adult and the minor whereas my dog vanessa actually focuses in on that in my opinion does it very well and brings a lot to the table with regards to that general topic mind you so please let's appreciate these novels for the different things they're doing even though yes they are in relationship to one another because Lolita is mentioned in My Dark Vanessa and even her fire is mentioned in My Dark Vanessa their references sure but to me the relationship is fairly specific I would say it's an answer and then a development of that answer to the misinterpretation of Lolita as a novel in pop culture and wider society and how that has affected the way we perceive these types of unhealthy and abusive relationships all in all yeah, they're fairly different works of literature, like I said. That was the point of this video. They are in a relationship with one another in a very specific way, in my opinion. I do think, ultimately, Lolita is the superior work of literature, but because thematically they're doing different things, they do contribute different things, and as such, both are valuable. Lolita, in my opinion, was constructed as its own integrated narrative from the get-go, whereas I fundamentally stand behind that opinion, I feel like my dog Vanessa was assembled after the fact in a way. So like she started writing this romance between Vanessa and Jacob over several years, as I understand it. And then she started getting into reading about trauma and like textbooks, I don't know. And then she was like, hmm, well, okay, I'm going to make that work with that thing I've been working on for years. And so she jammed it all together like a puzzle. But I feel like not all of the pieces fit as neatly as they ideally should, unfortunately. So at times it does feel a bit clunky. Those are my thoughts on that subject. What I would really like is someone to write a novel or a fictionalized memoir or a novel of autofiction. I do <laughs> see that's another thing. I, I feel like my dark Vanessa would have worked better, which sounds extremely weird, as a fictionalized memoir or a novel of autofiction and inject more of the 
author's visceral feelings. Into it. Anyway, we're past that now. But yeah, someone would write a work of literature that has both points of view. That's what I want. I want a dual point of view novel about a relationship more like Vanessa's than Lolita's, though actually my own relationship started closer to Lolita's age than Vanessa's whatever. But one way you would have the point of view of the predator and the point of view of well, the victim, and they would be in a relationship with one another. That'd be really cool. With the literary mastery of Nabokov and his character work, but the deep theming, or the deep specific theming of My Dark Vanessa. If that ever gets written, I'm getting on that so quick. <laughs> like, if it already exists and I'm not aware of it, please do tell me. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope I wasn't too rambly and you found some of it somewhat interesting. But in the meantime, I hope you all have a lovely day, evening, morning, whichever, and I shall see you in the next video. Bye-bye.